Okay, so here's the question of the day. Uh, this is, applies to not only Gundam fans, but uh, fans of Star Trek, Star Wars, Stargate, just whatever fictional universe you're a fan of. And what I'm curious to know is, are you at all interested in the uh, fictional technology that goes into making the fictional universe? Uh, that is to say, like, if you're a Star Wars fan, uh, does it all make you curious to find out that uh, the actual trench that runs along the Death Star actually houses a, uh, a landing bay, uh, dry thrusters, sensor arrays, and tractor beams, and it runs a total of 376 kilometers in length. Or if you are a Star Trek fan, you know, we're all familiar with the tricorder that measures the uh, patient's health, but apparently there is a psycho tricorder. Yes, that's right, a psycho tricorder that can measure the uh, psychosis, the psychology of the person, whether there's like a mental illness, um, that sort of thing. So I, did, I didn't know that, but according to uh, uh, memoryalpha.org, that is uh, one of the devices in the Star Trek universe. Or if you're a Gundam fan, are you at all curious as to how the beam saber technology works? Uh, even though it's fictional technology, um, I am kind of fascinated to see how it might work. And the way they describe it on Gundam Wiki is that the beam saber uh, emits high energy particles that form a blade shaped field. And in this field is a superheated plasma, uh, which allows it to effectively cut through most anything, as we all know uh, who are Gundam fans. Uh, furthermore, the hilt is charged by a reactor in the mobile suit. So a lot of those things that uh, we take for granted, maybe, in the anime or the show that we're watching or the fiction that we're watching or reading about. Uh, there's a lot of technology, you know, fictional, fictional technology that goes behind the actual, uh, in this case with Gundam, the mobile suit, or in Star Wars, behind the Death Star, um, and so on and so forth. So I'm curious as to how does that uh, affect you in your, uh, in your hobby, whether it be Star Wars, Star Trek, Gundam, whatever. Does it add to your enjoyment of the of of the universe of the uh, in the case of Gundam, the uh, the mobile suit? I know for me, for example, I like to to get some details about the mobile suit that I'm building, and reviewing because it adds a little more details to the review, and I can appreciate the mobile suit design a little more, uh, knowing that there's a certain te technology going behind it. Like take the uh, Sword Impulse Gundam, my very first model kit. I originally picked it up because I like you know figures with swords plain and simple. And this is before I actually watched the Gundam Seed or Seed Destiny anime. Well, what I found out um, subsequently is the actual, these anti-ship swords, they can actually cut through uh, whole, you know, warship type of uh, ships. And that was pretty amazing that it had that much, much power, much uh, strength. Um, take the uh, Mirage Frame uh, Astray, Mirage Frame, uh, I didn't know this, but apparently it can actually cloak itself, but it also can create an illusion so it appears like another mobile suit. Uh, if we take the Astray frame, a blue frame, rather the second version, uh, according to Gundam Wikia, that actually can um, carry what on it. It can carry a, uh, a Lohengrin type of weapon. Now the Lohengrin, as you recall from Gundam Seed and Gundam, Des Gundam Seed Destiny, was the weapon that usually mounts in the front of the Archangel or the uh, Dominion or the, the Archangel class of type of warship, it, would, it was the super weapon that they always brought out uh, to clear the clear the the way uh, they would destroy whole ships or a whole field of mobile suits. Apparently, that type of weapon with that capability can be mounted on this mobile suit, which is totally surprising to me. So, it's those little interesting little technical facts that really, uh, for me at least. Uh, add a lot of little uh, kind of enjoyment out of the uh, you know the mobile suit or the watching the anime, and uh, I think we don't always realize it, but there's a lot of you know fictional technology that goes on behind uh, whatever uh, fictional universe we're in involved in. Uh, so I, my my question to you would be, how much does that does that play a role in your enjoyment of of your fictional universe, whether it be Gundam, Star Trek, Star Wars? Um, and if, if at all, maybe it doesn't. Um, I know for me, for one, I would probably spend more time uh, 
reading through like the you know for example they have like a Star Trek fleet you know uh, Star Trek fleet technical manual that goes into all kinds of things like uh, detailed schematics uh, you know how a warp drive is made and that kind of thing or the Star Wars uh, the essential guide to weapons and technology uh, that sounds really, really interesting um, and they have some for Gundam too and they have the a Gundam uh, technical manual as well uh, but you know between my interest in Transformers and building model kits and trying to catch up and watch as much of the Gundam animes that I can I don't often have a lot of time to you know go into that much detail with the technical fiction behind the fiction um, but I was just kind of curious whether that played a role in your uh, enthusiasm for uh, Gundam, Star Wars, whatever fictional universe you're you're interested in. So as a follow-up question to the original question I posed in this video, uh, I wanted to ask people uh, where they go to get their Gundam-related uh, information, whether it be uh, certain information on the mobile suit or certain information about the Gundam universe in general. Uh, me, in particular, I go mostly to uh, Gundam.wikia.com and you know, wikias, of course, are uh, are, are, are web pages where you can add information. Just about anybody can add information to the wikia knowledge base. So, really, you kind of maybe have to take it with a grain of salt as, as to what some of the information is, as far as what being reliable or not reliable. But I don't know. I, I tend to find I use a lot of my information coming from Gundam Wikia. So hopefully, it's not going to be uh, too terribly inaccurate. Um, but you can see how they really have a nice format where they go and, and lay out the time of, type of weapons and so forth and give a little information about those. goes into the history of the mobile suit. And you can see here on the side, it gives information on the model number, uh, the date it was built, uh, the height, the weight, the width, or the, the weight of the, of the mobile suit, and uh, information about the armaments and then actual the technical name for those armaments. Um, so really, you know, helpful information if you're doing a review or you just want to know more about uh, that mobile suit. Now there is GundamOfficial.com, which I'm assuming is Bandai's official information website for Gundam, for all things Gundam. Now here we have information on the Sword Impulse Gundam, same mobile suit that we looked at on uh, Gundam Wikia. And it has a text specs here, which is fine, but there's the description, which is only a couple paragraphs really. So I find that the information is not as robust on GundamOfficial.com. So I tend to rely on Gundam Wikia. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think. And also, where you guys get your information and how reliable do you think that information is in terms of uh, information on the, on the Gundam universe.